guys what is up it's Mary Beth and welcome back to my channel I don't know why I always do that hand thing but I do so let's just roll with it today is kind of more of a serious video because I am going to be talking to you guys about a disease I have this video is meant to help any of you guys who may have POTS um, and to kind of feel like you're not alone and just kind of, I don't know, compare stories with how I dealt with things and how I came about finding I had POTS and just A, B, C, and D. So um, stick around if you want to know my story. So POTS is short for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And I have that. Although currently my symptoms are dormant, I do have POTS. It's something that never goes away. Like once you have it or I don't, I don't even know if you acquire it or if you're born with it or what. But I have it. I just, I don't have any symptoms right now. I wrote part of my essay for college. I wrote on it. And so I'm just going to read you a segment of it so you better understand what it is. Um, you're not going to get every single detail of it, but it just kind of helps you understand what it is and how it affects the body. So, this is what I wrote. POTS is a relatively new disease in which affects blood flow throughout the body. POTS is one of the diseases that affects the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system naturally conducts involuntary functioning that allows the body to function. For example, when we stand up, a lot of blood that was circulating in the upper body uncontrollably falls to the lower body. Our reflexes make sure that the blood that has fallen gets a portion back to the upper body. However, POTS affects those autonomic reflexes, thus causing irregular blood flow throughout the body. Due to the irregular blood circulation that was occurring in my body, I would experience symptoms such as dizziness, migraines, nausea, fainting, and a prolonging temperature. So that's kind of what it is. It's just a disease that affects your autonomic nervous system, which affects the blood flow, which causes all different symptoms. Like any possible symptom you can think of is associated with POTS. Everybody experiences different symptoms. However, my symptoms mainly were nausea, migraines, headaches, um, dizziness, and flushing. So yeah, those are my main symptoms. I'll talk a little bit about them more in a few minutes. So when did I first realize I was having these symptoms? All of these symptoms started occurring my halfway through my sophomore year of high school. However, at that point in time, I did not know POTS is what it ultimately was. At first, I simply thought I was having like a cold or a head cold or just, I just thought I was sick with a normal average um, Thing. Like I didn't know if I was getting sick or if I was getting over something, a bug I didn't realize I had. I started having these symptoms and but it was halfway through my sophomore year and there wasn't just one switch where it came on and all these symptoms started occurring. I think it had started happening earlier my sophomore year but I didn't really recognize it as a thing until halfway through and I started waking up with First, it started as headaches. I would just have a headache like all the time. And I thought maybe I was just stressed out because of school. But then they continuously got worse and they turned into migraines to the point where I'd wake up every single morning and like my mom would have to close the blinds because I was light sensitive and I just felt like pounding right in the middle of my forehead. Like I could feel my heartbeat in my head every single morning. And on top of that, I would have nausea and I'd always feel like I had to throw up like every single morning like I was constantly feeling like I was car sick I had a headache all the time and I'd always feel really 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 hot and that's another major symptom I had which was flushing my face would get super red and I just felt like so hot like when you touched my face like it was burning I was so hot but I didn't have a temperature so I started having these symptoms and they continued to get worse um to the point where I was unable to attend school anymore. And I started not attending school and that on top of feeling so crappy, it was really, really, really hard because 
I was stressed out because I was missing all this school and like my symptoms weren't going away. It's not like a cold where like in a week you're going to be fine. Like there was no progress happening. And then my just schoolwork was building up like so on top of being sick and then the schoolwork piling up, I was just insanely stressed. Like so, so, so stressed, which I think ultimately made things, made matters way worse. But I would have my good days still. There'd be times where I went to school or I just went to school late because I would wake up with a migraine, but then I'd kind of get control of it and then be able to attend school. I became on a first name basis with the attendance office because I was late that much. <laughs> the big thing that happened that kind of made me realize how serious this was, was um, there was one evening while my mom was making dinner inside, I decided to go out in the driveway and shoot some hoops. But I remember playing basketball and then I remember being really foggy. But ultimately what happened was I had passed out and my mom found me, I don't know how much later, she was making dinner so it couldn't have been that long, but she found me passed out in the driveway. And then when that happened, we took action and she brought me to the emergency room and nothing really came of it like they just said I was dehydrated and that like there was something wrong with me I'm pretty sure they took like x-rays and all that but um, nothing showed up and I basically was dehydrated um, so yeah it's super frustrating because my mom knew like something was wrong but then for them just to say like oh you're dehydrated like, you know, it, it's going to upset a mother when they know, like, their child is struggling with something and the doctors are like, no, she's fine. So, yeah, that happened. So, after the first emergency room visit, things were still, like, bad. I wasn't going to school very often. Um, every morning would be the same with my headaches, migraines, nausea. We made a few doctor's appointments many doctor's appointments actually. We were at Children's Hospital in DC. We were at my local pediatrician, because at the point I was like 16. Just doctor's appointments everywhere. And then after each appointment, they would refer us somewhere else, and then we'd be somewhere else, and then they would refer us somewhere else. So lots of doctors had every possible test done, x-rays, heart tests, like every single test possible. And they were all coming back normal. So we were just like, we didn't know what to do and it made it even more hard because I'm missing school at this point. I'm almost towards the end of sophomore year and I've missed half the year. So am I gonna be held back? Like we didn't know what was happening and it was very stressful for me. So moving on, I don't really remember the timeline of this, but I eventually was diagnosed with POTS. I don't remember which doctor specifically diagnosed me. I was going to a head doctor, a pain management doctor. I started attending physical therapy, but I don't know. I was diagnosed with POTS somewhere in there. Um, and because it was such a new disease, um, it made it really hard with school. Like my school wasn't working with me as great as I think they should have. Um, because there were two different programs. There was home hospital and then there was another program. I don't remember what it was because I ended up going with home hospital. But it was really hard getting my school to work with us. And I didn't want to like lose track of my school life. So I ultimately was on home hospital. And that ultimately lasted, sorry, I say ultimately like a thousand times. That's my go-to word these days. <laughs> Home hospital lasted a little under two years because this whole pot situation turned into just of half the sophomore year and then all of my junior year. So I missed a year and a half of my school. One thing that I think is very important to mention is that on top of being sick, like bedridden, um, being stressed out because I'm missing school, um, I was also stressed for the reason of like my friends. This was the hardest aspect for me. It's because it doesn't seem like it. Like it seems like every kid's dream to not have to go to school and just be like 
have a teacher come to your house but it's not because I enjoyed school I enjoyed the routine of seeing my friends every day and being able to be in classes with them and just having the lunch hour with them and participating in sports events like I love that so much and when I was unable to do those things anymore it really 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 hit me hard and I missed everybody and I started losing like contact with all my friends because I was almost I didn't really know what was going on with me like there was periods of time where I couldn't explain because I didn't know I had POTS yet so I didn't really know an answer to tell them when they'd ask like hey you're not at school like are you okay and I'd be like yeah I'm sick and then it just turned into like months of me being gone like hey why aren't you at school I'm sick again like it was just really hard telling my friends I'm sick because it almost made you feel like oh she's sick like it was just really hard like I know I could confide in them and trust them and stuff but like when I didn't even know what was going on with me it was hard to like vocalize that to other people when I would constantly like hear from friends and like eight different people during the day text me like why aren't you at school and having to tell each person why like it became really almost depressing and it got to a point where I didn't even want to talk to anybody because I was kind of ashamed of what I was going through and I kind of ended up pushing my friends away because I honestly got tired of the confrontation of it all like telling everybody everything and there were a select few that I kept in contact with um, because they just kind of knew the story so it made it a little easier but like just the process of missing school and not being able to be a part of those things or like all oh, my friends are going to the football game on Friday and I just can't go. You just almost felt excluded even though it's not by their doing and it's not even by your doing. It's just like the situation. But like that whole thing with my friends was really hard. And I don't want to say I got depressed because depressed is a really strong word. But I definitely got very sad because I felt very alone because I literally was stuck in my house like 99% of the time. If I wasn't at home, I was at a doctor's office somewhere. So by me pushing my friends away, it made me feel even more alone and it was just very, very hard. It was a very hard time and I started getting, I don't want to say depressed. <laughs> I was sad. I was very sad. But moving on with the whole POTS thing, um, I did get diagnosed and then they really kind of said, there's no cure, you just have to change your lifestyle, you need to exercise more to get your blood flowing, you need to drink 100 ounces a day to like keep your blood hydrated, I don't know if that's the right way of saying that. I was taking sodium tablets so the salt in my body would retain the water to help my blood. I was taking millions of medications. I was taking anxiety medication, um, I was taking so many things, um, I was going to a doctor that specifically was helping me with pain management, like their job was to help me cope with the pain I was experiencing every single day. They couldn't just give me a drug and I'm fine, like I had to learn and train my body how to deal with my migraines or my nausea. I was attending physical therapy a few times a week. To try to get my blood moving it's just like it seems like it would be easy like just like work out a little bit but when you're having that insane migraine where you can't even look at light and you feel like you're gonna throw up and be car sick any second it was hard to do all those things so that continued until the end of my junior year and then the miracle happened during a school one day like my school at my house with my home hospital teacher. My teacher had brought up how she was seeing this lady because she's had a hard time losing weight and she was doing everything, she was eating healthy, she was working out and she just wasn't seeing any results. So she had heard of this lady who was a holistic doctor and she gave her a try and she said that she was having success with this lady and it was helping her to lose weight and um, 
I don't know, she was like, why don't you try this? Because at this point in time, yes, I'd been diagnosed with POTS, but like nothing was coming of it. I wasn't getting better. So after literally probably like 50 doctor's visits, my mom's like, you know, we have nothing to lose. So why not? So we made an appointment with this holistic doctor and thank the Lord we did <laughs> because after that summer, the summer after my junior year, right before my senior year of working with this doctor, I had no more symptoms by the end of that summer. None, none. I was done. Like she cured me. She made me feel better. Like it was the best summer of my life because I wasn't experiencing the pain I had been experiencing for the past year and a half. Thank you, Misty. I owe everything to you. You cured me. And I have not had a single POTS symptom since. I was good. I am good. I'm doing great now. Um, yeah, I'm like cured. The one thing that still kind of freaks me out now is that POTS is always with me. It's not something that will just go away. Like, I still have POTS, but my symptoms are dormant right now. Like, I'm not experiencing any of those headaches or migraines or nausea. I'm not experiencing any of that. But, but that doesn't mean, like, POTS is, like, gone. So, they say that POTS is brought on by, like, hormones. A lot of times, teenagers experience it because they're going through such a great, like, hormonal period that it's, like, brought on. So if I ever go through a hormonal period again, I'm worried that I'll experience symptoms again. Like they say that people who have POTS have to be careful when they get pregnant because obviously pregnancy is a big hormonal change in your body and that sometimes people who have had POTS previously or experienced symptoms of POTS previously experience those symptoms again when they get pregnant and I definitely want to have kids one day so it kind of worries me about that point in time and whether or not like my symptoms will show up again but I do have a lot of like calmness towards it now because my holistic doctor helped me so much and I know I could always go to her again and um be fine but yeah I literally have, I forgot to show these the whole video. I have the receipts here. These are all my medical stuff from when I was sick. And this one folder is literally all my holistic stuff. So if you guys wanna have a video more in depth about just how I got cured and my holistic doctor experience, just let me know and I'd be happy to make that. Literally this whole folder, multiple folders, is all stuff like POTS doctor related. Like, I have a letter that went out to my high school about what was happening. I have all the urgent care documents um, from when I attended urgent care in the emergency room. Um, I have all the different doctor's papers in here for every single doctor's appointment I attended. I have my prescriptions, like I literally have like prescription bags from all the medicines I was taking. So if you want more in depth on like the details of stuff, just let me know. Or if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments as well. And I'd be happy to answer them, whether that be just in the comments or make a separate video on your questions. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a more serious video, but I thought I'd just put it out there in case anyone can relate or whatever. So thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up. If you'd like to follow me on my Instagram, my Instagram will be right here. Um, did I say subscribe? If not, subscribe. And I will see you next video. Peace out.